to Learning Unlocked. I'm your host, Britt Bingold. As an instructional specialist in Gilbert, Arizona, I'm a total nerd when it comes to classroom strategies and educational pedagogy. Educators are the key holders to unlocking learning for students. So today, as always, my goal is to provide you with resources and tools, the keys, to enable and accelerate learning for all students. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. Hey, key holders. Before we get going today, I just wanted to do a quick reminder that if you have time to write us a review on Apple Podcasts, we would appreciate it. The more reviews and ratings we get, the more educators will see our podcast. So if you like what you are hearing and think others would too, head over and provide a review. Welcome to episode eight of Learning Unlocked. Today we are discussing how to use mindfulness techniques and hands-on manipulatives to bring those together consistently throughout the learning process for younger students. Suzanne Lunt is going to be my guest today. She is a kindergarten teacher in one of our schools in our district. And honestly, she's just such a lovely human being. She has brought such light to my life. um, And I think she brings that to her students, the community, um, her school. And I think anybody that actually meets her, she's wonderful. Um, What I love most is probably by the end of this interview, you will probably feel calmer and a little wiser. And that's how I always leave my conversations with Suzanne. So I hope you enjoy the interview as much as I did. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. I have the pleasure of having Suzanne Lent on the podcast today. Um, I'm so excited to have you on, Suzanne. How are you doing? I'm doing great. The pleasure's all mine, Britt. Are you surviving virtual learning? <laughs> well, I I think so. I am exhausted. I'm looking forward to a new day of normalcy sometime. But it's uh, I, I'm getting better as we go. Okay, great. Yeah, no, everybody <laughs> I think wants our, our normal back for sure. I'm like, I'm feeling it too as a parent, you know, you're like, oh, oh yeah. No. Yeah, I love you, but I need you to go back um, (laughs) to school. Um, Tell our listeners just a little bit about who you are as a teacher, educator, what your passions are, what you're working on, just a little intro about yourself. Okay, well, um, I've always been an early childhood teacher, and that's what my degrees are in, and so I love the littles, and I feel like that's where I've really built my expertise, and um, my big thing is I just want to build a community a community of learners where we feel nurtured and safe and happy and respected. And um, I also want to have them feel really engaged as they're learning. And so I've been trying to do a little bit more each year recently with play and making our learning seem more playful. And so I, I really feel passionate about that. One other new thing that I'm trying is I've been bringing a little bit of whole brain teaching into my uh, team and my practice. And so I think that's helping me to have it be so interactive at some point. And that's been fun to see. And it'll be really fun to see when we get back all together because that can be a little strange over over the internet. Right. When you're t- telling <laughs> mirror words might not be so bad, but like, if you're like, okay, now turn to your imaginary teddy bear <laughs> or your, your, turn to your teddy bear and teach them mirror words. Right. But, hey, you know what? You can still make that work with, you know, um, maybe they're, they're stuffed animals or a, a pet or something. Um, I love that you said that you love fostering greater engagement through play. And I think the research on play over the last maybe five years um, that students Uh just develop such greater, deeper, um, I know this is going to sound weird, but dendrites in the brain through play. And that just those stronger, um, it just really does help students learn. Um, But yeah, anyway, so that that is, as soon as you, you know how I feel about play, Suzanne. I mean, Suzanne and I basically talk all week through Instagram. We just send each other pictures of cool 
engagement strategies. <laughs> and it's so fun. And I love it. Yeah. I was going to say, just besides that research, is it really feels right. You know, I, I feel badly for the kindergartners who are feeling so wiped out from trying to control their little bodies and minds when they should be more active and moving and talking and all that. So it, it just feels right. I agree. I mean, I, I couldn't, you, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. So you also have lived in Gilbert for years. Tell us about that. Well, um, we've just lived here forever and raised our family. Uh, we have four kids and they all grew up in Gilbert schools and we love, we love the area. And so I hope we never leave. And I just live across the street from my school and my husband's school is just down the street. So it just seems like the perfect fit for us. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And if, I saw that you like to um, ride your bike and walk when it's not so hot. Yes. I, ha I haven't done that yet this year. <laughs> I know. Right. And then um, that you guys give like back to your community um, and you're on various boards and volunteering. So it just sounds like you're involved in your community and then you also value community within your classroom. And I think that perfectly describes oh. you very, at, like, to a T. Thank I you. love it. Thank you. So, okay, let's get into our questions. So today we're talking about mindfulness and hands-on techniques with the younger kids because um, I've had a lot of teachers on that maybe teach middle school or high school kids, but I haven't had anybody on that really teaches that pre-K to first grade um, kind of group. And so I love how you build in both mindfulness and hands-on techniques, plus that I love as a teacher, you continue to love to grow. So you're adding in some whole brain teaching into it as well. Um, but from the very beginning, kindergartners, I mean, I we always say that you guys should be paid more because, oh my goodness, they come in at so many different levels of, oh, of yeah. knowledge. I don't know how you do it. So obviously you need to build relationships, but you also have to have these firm expectations because you've got these whole class meetings when you're in class, and then you've got obviously small group and whole class as well when you're in virtual. And kindergartners can only sustain like listening for so long. So what are right. some things that you do to keep their attention? Because you want to have that firm, like what does Wendy call it? That warm demander, right? You got to make sure like they enjoy school, but right. also we have stuff we have to get done. You don't want to scare them, you know? <laughs> so what do you, what are some things you do that, that just, you feel like really works um, with all okay. your experience? All right. Well, the first thing that just came to mind was um, like when some of my kids are forgetting that they need to raise their hand before they unmute and hop into the conversation, which every teacher is struggling with right now. You know, we've done our, um, whole brain rules. And so they know the motions, they know what number it is. And so uh, when they just pop in, then I just have to say, oh, rule number two, raise your hand for permission to speak. And then they know exactly what to do. And so it's not like I'm pulling, pointing at anybody out in just a negative way, but I'm just reminding everybody of what our rules are. And so I think that's really kind of setting a tone that we know what our rules are. And and we've learned them in an engaging way with actions and movement. And so I think that's one thing that's going to help us throughout the entire year. Um, well, that's awesome. I mean, and, what, yeah. and that is a great way for whole brain teaching to work virtually is to do the, the rules. And I'll link um, the whole brain teaching website when I post this podcast so that um, okay. the listeners can kind of know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah. there, are, there are rules and there are emotions that go with those rules. And you can do that virtually or in face-to-face -face for sure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And actually, I've only taught with whole brain teaching. I've only done the rules. And so I, I'm kind of waiting for when they're back in person since I'm not an expert in it yet. But that's been a good experience so far. Well, and it's a great time to, to kick it off too. Yeah. So yeah. what else do you do um, to kind of help them, you know, along? Well, um, one thing is, is I like to come on early to WebEx. And so they just start trickling in and I can kind of have personal conversations with the kids as they're coming in. And I think that's really special. And, and I also wait a little bit before I end and leave my meeting. And it's just so sweet because 
kids, they they kind of hang on for a little while and you hear the little boys say, oh, I love you, Mrs. Lent. And, you know, they just have their little messages and it's sweet because you're building those relationships. Um, another thing that I do in person and online is I'm always singing with kids. And I think that they love that. And even though I can't see them, I can see their mouths moving and I can see them looking right into the camera. And so in a way, we're kind of making a connection there. Um, oh, for sure. and, and what are you seeing? What types of songs do you sing okay. with them? Well, um, one thing that I did uh, at the very beginning of the year, and I can still do it to practice, but we sing... Twinkle, twinkle, kindergarten star. And so I'll just show you how it goes. Twinkle, twinkle, kindergarten star. How we wonder who you are. Kate, are you here today? Open your mic and shout hooray. And so they're just ready to open their mic and say their little word. And then welcome, welcome, kindergarten star. We're so glad you're who you are. And then you go to the next one. Open your mic and shout. And then they shout hooray. And oh I my gosh. Like, so oh, yeah. oh, so fun. I love that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So building the relationship, we're getting to know who they are and they're practicing that important skill of knowing how to mute and unmute their microphone. So that's Perfect. great. Um, plenty of times they need to have, you know, some time where they can stand up and move. And so you can always share Go Noodle or whatever. You know, there are lots of great things. Sometimes if I don't have anything planned, then I just pull out a song out of my pocket and, you know, we stand up and we move like taking your sillies out and uh, head, shoulders, knees and toes or whatever it is so we can so we can move. And then when I'm teaching concepts. I like to use music quite a bit. Like, for instance, with thinking maps, we use different songs to that go with each thinking map that helps to reinforce the vocabulary and helps them to remember with actions what it is that we're doing. So I like to just use music all the time, really. Um, I think the most special time of my day is at the end when I tell my kids, let's really make a connection and we're going to sing together and we're going to look right into each other's eyes. And so Right now online, I'm just looking straight into my camera and singing to everybody. But um, for the past few years, I've done Mr. Rogers' song, um, It's You I Like. I and so they're just singing with me. And the end just goes, it's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. And then I always say, if nobody's told you this yet today, I love you. And then I train them to say, I love you right back. And then that's the end of our day. And it just feels so good to have made the connection, share a little bit of love because, you know, not every child is feeling those feelings from a lot of other places. So I think that's really important. They can't learn if they don't know that they're cared about. Okay, I just got chills all over my body when saying that. I mean, it just, oh, uh, if I just, if somebody would just sing that to me every morning, <laughs> I would feel really ready to go for the rest of the day. Um, so I think that's super awesome. And I've been to your Thinking Maps class actually in person, and I hope you get to teach it um, in person again this year, hopefully, if not in fall, because we have no idea what that's going like, but hopefully in spring, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend any of our GPS teachers to take it. I mean, from elementary to secondary, because I think music and mnemonic devices and singing, um, you don't have to be this amazing singer to sing to your kids and make up silly songs. And I used to sing to my high school kids all the time and they loved it. And so, um, I just, I really loved that class when I took it and I just, um, I would definitely highly recommend it. Um, and so we'll, I'll put that up there as well when I, and I post this. Thanks, Britt. Um, as of right now, I have that class scheduled for September 22nd. Yeah, and I think might. we might just make it if our kids are all back into school on the 21st. So I, that could be, I don't know if there are any openings there left, but that, that's the next time I'm going to teach. Well, I can't wait. I mean, I just, I highly recommend everybody going because it is, and, and really it's like, oh yeah, 
Like you just, you sometimes you just forget to, it's okay to be silly and like <laughs> with your kids and, and yeah. saying, and no matter their age, you know, and some, even if they're rolling their eyes at you, cause they're like fifth graders, because that's how <laughs> fifth graders are. Right. You just keep doing it, you know, cause it, it, deep down inside, they're like, okay, I really like this. She's a nut, <laughs> but I love her. Um, okay. It is so important for both the teacher, the student and the student's families to build a routine during this time of distant learning but i also think just in general for school for a little is to have that routine as yeah. they get older they kind of tend to make their own routines i feel like um but i know a lot of families are struggling with just getting like different age kids online at different times and right and you're you're a grandparent you've got students going through this you know mm -hmm. um you have any advice for creating a routine um, do you think that um, right now we just need to embrace the chaos or do we just, is it maybe a little bit of both? Like, I don't know. I mean, I yeah. know we're getting close to maybe going back, but even right. then, I think there needs to be some type of routine for kiddos. Right. Well, with our online learning, I think it's just really important, especially for families who have more than one child, which is, you know, a lot of families, to try to just have everything in one place. And so I think that that's one great thing about having Buzz as our platform is we have one place to go and, you know, I have my schedule right there, all the live links. And so they can just see it so easily and click on whatever they need. And there's really no guessing work about it. They just have it right there. So that's good for them. That's good for me. I don't have to answer quite as many questions. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Right. Well, and you just put it on the on the landing page of Buzz, and is it like a playlist or a weekly agenda? Like, how do you kind of organize? Yeah. Well, I actually just put it on um, my reading landing page. Okay. And uh, it has the daily schedule right there, and it's just like uh, it's kind of takes you through the day with times and what kind of what they're expected to do. And, you know, so it has their special, which is at 125, click here and go there. And you have uh, the WebEx meeting with Mrs. Lunt, click here. It takes you right to our WebEx meeting. Or watch this video of Mrs. Lunt teaching about math, click here, you can do it. So I think it's just pretty simple to do it. I also have a Bitmoji Classroom that has, I just think it's kind of lots of extras to, help kids have interesting and educational things to do when they have a little downtime and it's supporting the things that we're learning in our math and reading. So I, I think that's, that makes it really fun. Well, that's super fun. And were you able to embed that into Buzz uh -huh. at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just like at the top. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, we just haven't had a lot of experience with Buzz. It's on the, the on the professional growth side. It's kind of weird. But they didn't really give us like a practice. I was like, I want a practice room. Like, like I want right. to. I don't know how to do this. Um, and Bitmoji classrooms, it seems to be super fun and popular right now. And and teachers are loving them because they can link them all to different places. So you're having this as kind of um, enrichment. Yes, totally. It's just there for enrichment, the stories that go along with what we're learning. And as we're learning the ABCs, they can click on the alphabet line up above my board and it takes them to like this week is the letter F and it takes them to an F room where Every activity has something to do with F and it's fun and songs and activities. And so I, I hope that my students are all really using it. I'm not sure <laughs> how that's really going. I don't know. You something that I'm hearing. My, my three-year-old, or well, he's going to be four this in September, but I'm trying to teach him some preschool letters and it, he is just, it's literally, it's killing me slowly. Oh. Um, because he is my, I will tell you every name of every dinosaur and right. pronounce it correctly, but will not remember the ABCs to save his life. And he was supposed to be in his first year of like real preschool this year, right. you know, and he didn't start with COVID. So I've been trying to do a little preschool with him and do a letter of the week and a number of the week and shape and color and all that kind of stuff and do activities in the morning. But I'm just like, I, I just am <laughs> like, oh, and then I start. And then I, as soon as we're done with that, it's like mama's morning meeting. And then we go into like my daughter who's in second grade uh -huh. and we go into her schooling. So by the time it's 12 and I start my work, I'm like, oh, I could really use, <laughs> I 
could really use a break. Yeah. But I love, I love that idea that parents can, even maybe with some of their younger kids, if they have littler ones, uh -huh. could go into your Bitmoji. That's true. Enrichment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and come in and be like, hey, look at the letter F. And they could do that. And they could feel like they're big, like they're siblings. Yeah. You know, like you're doing work too. Because that's one of his things is he wants a laptop and he wants to get on and um, do all these things. Well, I'll just have to share my Bitmoji classroom so you can try it <laughs> so out. So I can them. take it from you. I'm like, oh, can I steal that? That sounds great. Um, okay. <laughs> and the thing I want to point out that you said, and I really feel like this is super important because I have heard from parents yes. who are struggling, is that you have that schedule in the same place every single day, right? Yes, Kids know yes. where to go. They go to Buzz and they can see what they're supposed to do that day. And it's not weekly. You said it's da a daily thing. You have not put up Monday through I Friday. do it daily. Okay. Mm-hmm, daily. And part of that is I'm just trying to pull myself together. You know, I'm not quite ready to get out the whole week, but <laughs> we're doing the best we can. Yeah. Well, and I yeah. also think, but yeah, I think for it's sure. good for the younger students to just have it checked daily. I, you know, it, my, I do that for my second grader. I, I print out her weekly, but exactly. then I literally just cut in strips her day <laughs> and I just put it in front of her because I feel like if she just sees the day, uh -huh. it's like, I can make this, I can make these four or five things happen today. Um, and yeah, so I think that's awesome. Okay. So I was lucky enough to visit your classroom last fall, which is when I first met you and, um, it was so warm and so inviting. But what struck me most, honestly, was your use of mindfulness techniques with your students. When I saw your class, all of a sudden, they all got kind of anxious. I don't know what it was going on, but everybody kind of got, the room got anxious and you stopped everything and they all listened to you and you said for them to all close their eyes and you took them through a breathing exercise. And literally it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever witnessed in a classroom. Um, and then after you did this, I saw your kinders be able to, it was like a switch. They were able to then refocus on what they were learning. They could continue with whatever they were doing. It was like they were able to just turn off the TV for just a second or change that channel of stress um, and, and be able to kind of move forward. How have you incorporated these techniques okay, into well, virtual um, learning space? I, and I really believe you that you it's important for all of us as adults and in virtual kids learning, but also to when they learn get how to so I know that's like manage ourselves question, because but. we all feel anxious and we all start to feel stressed at certain times. And sometimes when we stop in the class, probably I'm the most stressed out of anybody. And so we just need to take that break, you know? Um, but I, I like to help them to breathe, to focus, and to think positive, positively about having that quiet and calming experience. And so at first when my kids are sitting and they learn to be still and close their eyes, I like to help them to focus on our breathing. I whisper affirmations that they whisper back to me. And so I feel like it's just a really positive experience. Like I might say, um, I am calm, and they whisper, I am calm. I can breathe, I can breathe, and I can do hard things, and then they whisper it back. And so they're just getting these things that are coming into their minds that help them to build that positive outlook on what we're doing as we're being more calm in our classroom. We would never want a calm thing to be like a punishment, like get in there and put your head on the table because, you know, you are not acting right. So, you know, it kind of turns it around so that we can all have these positive feelings about being calm and quiet. Uh, one thing that I've discovered over the summer, which I really liked, is um, Phoenix Children's Hospital is working with Coles and they've developed a Mindful Me program. And you can go onto Cole's website and find their Mindful Me program. And you can actually print out their mindfulness cards that they have right there for free. And, and also uh, the great thing is you can 
uh, request a visit where they'll come out and help to train you in mindfulness activities. And so they came out to my school and trained the kinder and first grade teams and people couldn't stop talking about it. They're ready to use it right away. So we have these um, mindfulness cards that are broken up into different topics like breathing and mindful activities, um, being seated, standing, working with a partner, lots of different kinds of activities. And um, it gives you the exact verbiage. It gives you pictures of how it should look. And so I'm looking forward to when my students are coming that I could pull out some cards and say, okay, who's gonna pick today? And let them come up and pick an activity and then we can take them through different kinds of breathing and mindfulness activities. I've already done some of them even online, and it seems like it's going pretty well. This whole thing for all kids, all people, I mean, us as humans, everybody is kind of at level 10. My husband and I were talking about this uh, a few weeks ago. It just seems everything is just accentuated more than it normally would be. Um, something will make me kind of like snap or something at my child that I normally would never snap at, but because they've been in my life since spring break, <laughs> every day I'm like, you know, I just, my, my limit in my patience is lower. My patience threshold is lower than it normally is. And so I love the idea of getting these mindful me cards, just even for the house, or I love the go noodle flow. We do the, that sometimes. And, and that helps a lot with just, because I think we, as even adults need, um, that time. I mean, that's why the Apple watch tells you to breathe. If you have one of those, like, I think we're finding out as we get more research into stress and anxiety and, and mental health and all of those things are becoming less taboo, taboo um, are the researchers saying, well, we're not doing this enough and we're not training our kids to do it from a young age. And so it's carrying it through to adulthood and it's really giving a lot of adults anxiety. And then obviously then you add a pandemic and Right, right. So, well, what a blessing it is for five year olds to learn how to control their emotions and their bodies uh, through being mindful. So, I, I think it's awesome. I think that's that's awesome. And those are life skills. I mean, those are skills that yeah. you need throughout the, you have to be able to control your mind, your body, and um, yeah. and your words too. You know, your words are so powerful yeah. and they have to learn that, they have to learn to think about what they're going to say. And, how they want to say it. And you have those littles and you're, and you're crafting that, you know? So I think that's awesome. Um, I have Thanks. seen some of your screencasting lessons and they are, I love them. Um, first of all, I love when you send them to me. Um, <laughs> but as we've gotten, okay. So we all screencasted in spring and I, I think one of my screencasts was like, 45 minutes or something really bad. And I was, I didn't know, I don't know what I was doing. And so, um, and so I, then I, I read an article. I don't remember. Do you remember me posting it on our Facebook group? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was yes. like, oh my gosh, it's supposed to be like five to 15 minutes. <laughs> yes. And I thought, oh, I've been doing this so wrong. I have to share this with everyone because we're, you know, no one's an expert in pandemic teaching. I mean, there's no... No. So I think, um, but you've done such a great job of, I think, taking what you were doing, which obviously was not 45 minutes because you knew kinders couldn't sit through that long anyways, but just making and honing that. Um, and I like that you use everyday hands-on stuff that like is in everybody's household or pretty much in everybody's household that they could just mm -hmm. go and grab. And I think you even say at the beginning right now, we're going to need these materials you know, right. um, I love that you're like, okay, go get this, 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 and then come back in a minute. And then you just wait, like you literally just wait in your screencast for them to get those things. And it's not stressful. Um, can you walk teachers through how you do a screencast and to just make sure everybody knows this is different from your live lesson. This is a video that you're using um, or using Screencastify or something like that. Um, to, to teach students as maybe a lesson or a resource. So I just want to make sure that everyone's clear on that. But how do you how do you plan this? And how, could you just walk through teachers on how to do this for younger students? Because I think you do it so well. Well, thank you. Um, well, I think you, first of all, you think what what is my target? What am I teaching? Right. And 
how can I do it using something that they have at home? And so when I can kind of think of, um, we could use a paper plate that they could ride on and go on a hunt, or we could use some Play-Doh that they can smash every time there's a syllable, or, you know, trying to make it active, trying to use things that are at home and giving options for making it work. It doesn't have to look just like what I'm doing. Right. And right. so I think that just coming up with what we want to teach, coming up with an activity that's engaging, that uses things that they'll have right at home, and then uh, modeling it for them, and then letting them do it with you. I think it's just, you know, going to work out every time because they have things at home and they're ready to move and do it right with you. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I love doing things where, I mean, I'm a hands-on visual learner, so it's really hard for me to learn mm -hmm. just by reading text. Um, uh -huh. And so for me with my own kids, I'm like, okay, I got, we gotta, we gotta get up and we gotta move and we gotta, right. at least move, even if we just move locations, like, yeah. you know, like let's just go to Ottoman Island, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just took yes. my daughter's stuff and we went to the Ottoman for a little while to work <laughs> because it was like, I just it's couldn't you know, be at the kitchen table anymore. I was like, I can't. Um, course, okay, yeah. so you have the materials and then yeah. you have them gather them. And then I love that you say you film only once. I love that. That is true. I think that I could make myself crazy if I tried to stop and get a perfect shoot. And so I just do the best I can. And if I make a mistake, then you just laugh it off. Oh, see, teachers make mistakes too. And, um, you know, the kids are gonna know that you're not perfect. One thing that I do that, um, I, you know, I'm just learning with the technology. I have the hardest time when I'm sharing videos while I'm doing a WebEx and half the time it doesn't work. I think I'm getting better now, but <laughs> so as I'm getting ready to do it, I, I say, kids, cross your fingers. This is really <laughs> hard for me. They're all crossing, you know, and then I ch think that I have it going and some mom tells me it's not working. And so I say, okay, I'm going to try it again. See, we try hard things again and again. I oh, have grit. Wow. I won't quit. You know? And then yes. I get up the next time. Everybody cheers. See, we make mistakes and we try again. And, you know, they just have to see that we're all learning. Yeah. And I think just being vulnerable with your students is, I mean, I was always vulnerable with my class. I mean, I remember uh -huh. teaching. I mean, and I taught the older kids. I was a high school English teacher. So right. I would teach something and then uh, three hours later, I'd realized that wasn't right. <laughs> like it was, it wasn't wrong, but it wasn't how it should have been. So then yeah. the next day the kids come in and, you know, you have them an hour. So like by third hour, you realize you taught first hour's lesson completely. Just, it was a hot mess. And so <laughs> then first hour comes in the next day and you're like, kiddos, by Sorry. third hour, I realized blah, 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 blah. And they were like, oh, that makes more sense now. I'm like, right. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't come to me until third hour. And I think just being honest with them like that, they, right. that builds your relationships and actually builds your credibility as well as a teacher. Uh -huh. Like, I'm not perfect. I'm so sorry. Like, I do my best, but sometimes things come to me later in the day and you're A hour or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and my brain's not on the point yet. Um, so, well, okay. Do you, did you do a newsletter? The human side. Yeah, the human side for sure. Did you do a newsletter or anything for your parents about like, hey, we're going to have like Play-Doh and pom-poms and, you know, and did you give them a newsletter about this at, or did you just kind of go with it? Um, are you talking about at the beginning of the online the school year? Teacher? Yeah. Well, um, I did put together a little packet with the rest of my team of essential learning supplies for our kids. So a little thing of potato, a little 10 frame, um, a dry erase foundations board, and you know, several other things that they can just whip out while we're having our live meetings or even in our recorded videos. That we use them a lot. So smart. I, that's I, really I super smart. Share that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was wondering, because I don't, you know, 
I would be like stressed out as a parent if all of a sudden your teacher was like, okay, now take out your blah. And I'd be like, I don't have a hammer. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, right. you know. Um, and well, the night before every day, I take a picture of the materials that are going to be needed for the next day, or if there's a certain kind of paper that they have at home or that we've sent home to them. These, this is what's needed for this day. And so oh, it really helps parents, so especially helpful. who are trying to work, mm -hmm. so that they have everything right in place for their students. Yeah, and you're so calm. Um, you're so calm on film. You're so calm in life. I mean, oh, okay. I wish I could just. I guess I could just sponge some of your, just <laughs> breathe it in. But see, I need to come to your classes and be more, and be more mindful. I'm trying. It's actually something I'm really working <laughs> on during um, quarantine is being and doing more mindfulness things with myself and my kids. Um, but I love that you said that you, you just be goofy and you be silly and then you just share it. And it is uh -huh. what it is. And and I think parents appreciate having info ahead of time. Yeah. Knowing yeah. where to go every day to get what they need for their student. Cause we're all, you know, we're all working from home too, you know, or some of us, one might be going to work, one might be switch yeah. or they might switch days. I mean, who knows? So if it if it's in the same spot all the time, that's so helpful. And then mm -hmm. also I think if as a parent, just watching your student interact with songs and music and scavenger hunts and and materials um that they're not just staring passively at, at a screen it's not like you're on tv and they're just watching you and doing nothing right right i don't think i really talked about the scavenger hunts but i think that's a great way to start my live meetings as the kids are coming on and so um i've been doing a lot with colors and okay as you're coming on f go find something red show everybody what you found or uh, find something that has the beginning sound. What can you find? And so they just, they get on, they figure out what they're finding. They're running around the house. They're excited and they come back to share. And so they're excited from the very get-go and they're getting to know each other a little bit. By doing right. That. And, well, really good. And, and even with just ending the day with that song, I mean, I think we're just, you're, that community is, those kids want to come back to see you and the parents trust that there is a plan and you have a plan for their kids. I think a lot of parents are stressed because they just feel like um, they're supposed to just sit their kid down in front of a screen and just watch basically TV for the entire eight hour school day and maybe do a couple activities and buzz or something. And yeah. I think it's so, it, I mean, I know it's hard, but as a teacher, it, it does take a lot of work to, um, you know, get put, put all this effort into here's your materials, here's this. But I think though, it's so worth it for the students and the parents because it's yeah. hands on, it, you know, yeah. sorry yeah. about that little noise. My computer just threatened to restart. And I was like, mm -mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> We're not restarting right now. Okay. <laughs> so you're not in charge. Yeah, you're not in charge. I'm doing a, um, an interview. So <laughs> for your updates, computer. Okay. All right. So on the flip side. Okay. I have been so proud of you because you have really tried, because we, we you do use a lot of hands-on stuff, which I think is awesome. But you've also tried tech tools that you think K through 12, you know, two students can do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you were like, I don't know, but you are one of those teachers, I think, that you just kind of do, like you said, with your students, we're going to give it a try and we're going to see what happens. And failure is always an option and it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what well, have you had success with, with your kinders? Because I know it's hard for them to get on to some of these tech tools for sure. Uh-huh. Well, it's one thing I have to say is, it works out great to have a team that works together. And so I really noticed through this pandemic that each of us has really been shining in the area where we have passion the most. And so one of my colleagues really loves the Bitmoji classrooms. And so I can't take all the credit for how great it always turns out because she's really tweaking it and we give input too, but that's kind of, she's kind of a, chairman of that little thing. And then maybe I'm uh, getting lots of great ideas about Screencastify ideas. And then maybe my other 
um, friend is, has other ideas that she is really good at and it comes easy to her. And so I think that's really important for us to know that we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses, but we can support each other and help each other. And so, you know, together we're learning about how can I figure out Flipgrid? How can I do Seesaw? What can we do about this? And we kind of, you know, wade through it together and help each other. And I I would be going crazy if I didn't have a good team. I think that's so important. Yeah, and we know teacher collective efficacy is so uh -huh. high on uh, John Hattie. Yeah, his high yield strategies, man. I mean, it's at the top. If you work together, it's better for your kids. And it looks like you guys are clearly doing that, you know, with the tech. I mean, it's hard to figure out what's going to work for these kids. I have a second grader. Um, she uses Seesaw every day. Um, and at first I was like, how is this going to work, girl? Because like, you cannot write with this pen. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so we figured out really quickly that if it was multiple choice, it would be really good to use the highlighter tool for her and make it darker. And then she could just kind of bubble. But if it was math or if it was um, anything typing related to use the text box. And then oh. she's in second grade and she has quickly figured out how to control C copy and control V paste the same text. And she has figured that I taught her and she's got it down now where she can do that for all of her math problems. So what she'll do is she'll solve one and then she'll like put the number seven in and then she'll copy and paste it over to the next problem and solve it, delete the number seven and put a wow. five in and copy and paste it over to the next problem. And I mean, she's in mm -hmm. second grade and she can do that. Yes. I mean, and the thing I like about Seesaw and Flipgrid is they narrate sometimes what they've done um, and what they've learned. And to listen to her, I don't like prep her, you know? So it's interesting, her teacher the other day had them on Seesaw do um, a sort um, of like complete sentences and incomplete sentences. And mm -hmm. then they had to, after they did the sort that she had prepared, they, she had to narrate why she chose which sentences and why. And it was really short. It was like a three, you know, like a 30 second thing, but just the parent to listen, like, oh, you really did get it. And I love that that teacher is having them justify their learning. Um, and, and Flipgrid is easy for, easy to do that. Um, but I think parents and, and, and younger, um, not younger teachers, teachers of younger students, sorry. Um, it's getting late in the afternoon, Susanna, my brains aren't working. My brain's done. Um, <laughs> you can call me a young teacher if you want to, Brett. Suzanne, as a young teacher of young students, um, here's the thing that parents I think need to know is that in their notes, on their phone, if they have an iPhone, if they add a new note and click on the camera button, that's actually a scanner and it will take all of the shadows away oh. from the picture. And it actually looks like a scan document. And I learned this this year from my daughter's teacher because I kept taking pictures of her spelling tests on my counter and it was shadowed. And she said, did you know that you can just scan it into me using your notes on your iPhone? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and it's been great because then I can turn in her work and it's, you know, because she has them do a lot of manipulatives. Uh huh. You know, and then we're supposed to take a picture of it and yeah. upload it into Seesaw. And then, then the stu my daughter narrates it and her learning mm -hmm. of it. And my pictures were not so great, I guess. So. <laughs> That's my tip for parents of younger students. Is if you have an Apple phone, you can actually use your notes as a scanner and it will take all the shadows away from the image and it makes it very clear. Wow, that's awesome. Really, the only way that um, I've used Seesaw and Flipgrid is just after they've worked on some kind of a project of building something or uh, figuring something out, then we, we like them to share. And so it's so darling to see them uh, film themselves explaining how they did something and they're just feeling really proud and it's great to see how their thinking is working too. So I just love it. Well, and it's great to it with, you know, with Flipgrid and Seesaw um, that you can just give them um, feedback, you know, 
almost mm-hmm. immediately. There's room for like that little bit of a comment. You know, you can say, yes. oh, I really liked your blah, blah, blah. And um, her teacher does not comment on everything, but she does comment on quite a bit, actually. I uh-huh. But I, I, that when she sees her teacher commenting or actually in Seesaw, they have like the little like button, you know, like the little heart. Mm-hmm. She's oh, like, oh, yeah. She loved my thing. Like, at least, you know, she saw it and acknowledged <laughs> it. You know, she liked it. She liked my story. Yeah. I think um, even the younger students, once you've built those relationships and you've gotten into the content um, and they love doing all the hands-on things with you, and then you kind of start to work them into some digital tools, uh-huh. any digital tool that allows them to do um kind of like a narration or have you give them feedback immediately or or within mm-hmm. a good time period, maybe before your next live lesson, I think is is huge for just yeah. dynamism yeah. and credibility as a teacher. Yeah, for sure. I try to comment, you know, when they do their little videos. And what I really like about it is since most of them are not readers, is I have the option to just record my feedback. And so they can hear it and they can hear mm-hmm my voice inflection and how excited and proud I am of them. And so I, I just think it's great for getting feedback and building relationships. Yeah. And then they get to see each other's stuff too, you know, like they, they can look at, uh, you know, Johnny's video and Sally's yeah. video. And, and, and yeah. it's kind of like, this is your showcase of whatever it was that you were learning, which I think is awesome. So I yeah. uh, would you recommend that some teachers that are of the with the younger kids try to do a couple tech tools, maybe one? I I think it can only add to what they're doing. I would definitely choose a Flipgrid or Seesaw. I would definitely, if you have a little bit of extra time, try out the Emoji Classroom. And uh, the other one that I really love is Epic Books. Yeah, we didn't talk about Epic Books, and I see it on your list. I don't even know what that is. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, Epic Books is this free resource that ha- just has a library of all kinds of uh, books that are at different levels and under different kinds of topics, social studies, science, reading, and different kinds of, um, do you want to know about being a fireman? Do you want to know about the solar system? You can just look up so many things and they even have videos that go along with it. The thing that I really like about kindergarten with Epic Books is many of the books are, uh, you can have it read to you. And so you click on the page and it takes you through it. And then you click on the next page and it takes you, you can hear the words and it highlights each word as it goes. Oh, nice. And that's great for your, your kinders because they're not readers quite yet. Yeah. Right. It's it's beautiful. So I really like that. And I can look as a teacher as I can see who's spending time on there, what books have they looked at. And it, it's a great resource to help me to see what the kids are doing. Especially because at this point, you just want them reading, right? It, whether they're mm-hmm. getting read to or they're just, you know, looking through books. Like we want right. the love of reading to be nurtured at this point in their age, you know, so that way yep. when they start to really get into reading, they, they're, mm-hmm. they've got a positive experience with it. And so that's a great virtual way to do that. I love that. It sure is. And with the libraries not being opened right now, it's a great resource. I know. I'm, I'm di- we're dying over here because my daughter has gone through all of her Junie B. Jones books and she's like, okay, mom, I I need some. What's, What's next? next? So we're, we're, we're reading Lulu right now. So if anybody has second graders that love the sassy Junie B. Jones, the sassy Lulu is also a great follow-up to that. Um, okay. If listeners want to learn more from you, where can they find you online? Well, um, I started not too long ago an Instagram account. It's called Kickin' in Kinder. And I try to put up, you know, ideas and things of what I'm doing. I've noticed that I was pretty gung-ho during the summer as I was, you know, working on things and getting excited about school. And then as I got into my online, I was pretty weighed down with what I was doing. So I have posted some things, but I expect once I'm hands-on and with kids that I'll I'll start posting a lot more things. But I, I love to share the, the things that I'm learning about or new things that I'm trying. And I think we're all just learning. So 
Yeah, and hopefully we'll be back in school soon. And it's at Kicking in Kinder, and so I'll, and I'll also make sure I put that on the show notes for everybody. And okay. then you, and then do you mind if they email you if they have any questions about Thinking yeah. Maps songs yeah. or not at ahead. all? So go ahead and give your email. Okay, it's Suzanne dot Lunt at GilbertSchools.net. Okay, and they might yeah the mindfulness cards and uh -huh. um and just starting i love how you start and you your webex a little early and let those kiddos come in and and go search or find something um and and yeah it's super important to just it, it is it's like they're playing it's kind of like they're just pl having a, a good play date with you um while learning and i think that is super important for that age group for sure well thanks that's what i'm trying to do but i have to confess that at least once every time uh, every day so far, somebody has said, is it time for us to be done yet? <laughs> well, that kind of um, deflates you a little bit, but it's bound like, to happen. Yeah, it's not. It's you I like, kid. Okay? <laughs> I love you. Yeah, no, there's always going to be that one. But um, <laughs> I think, I don't think it's you. I think it is. Um, I have so many other distractions that I could yeah. be doing. Right. That, um, it, it's really hard for them to stay focused, I think. Even it if, you know, as a teacher mom, I sit there and I'm like, you will sit up and you will look <laughs> and you will pay attention. And this is how the camera will look on you. And she's mm -hmm. like, mom, you're like crazy. And I'm like, well, you know what? I know what it's like to teach a course of people whose cameras are completely off or I'm looking up their nose or yeah. their, their dogs in the frame. I know what that's like. And you're not going to be that kid in this class. <laughs> well, I know. And I have, I do have to say, I do have a student every once in a while going over to the couch and doing backflips yeah. and that sort of thing. And but you what, have what do you that do? In yeah, I mean, that's what are you going to do? You've got little ones, you know, but my, she's second grade. So I'm like, it's like you're old enough now. You can sit for 45 minutes and then listen. And her teacher is really good at doing, you know, keeping the rule of like, okay, so you're around eight. So I'm going to talk for uh, eight minutes and then, okay, we're going to go, we're going to now go to our piece of paper and do something. And then everybody hold it up when you're done, you know. So at least she's good yeah. about having that back and forth and she's not just talking the whole 45 minutes. So that's, yeah, that's that perfect. sounds perfect. Yeah. And it sounds like you're not doing that either, but obviously we want to caution everybody not to talk <laughs> 45 minutes to kindergartners. <laughs> They're not. That's true. They're going to just leave you and go do something else on the couch. That's what they're going to do. Right. So. That's true. Well, Suzanne, it was lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast with me this afternoon, or I guess this evening. It's it's 520. So thank you for working extra hours on top of all the hours you're working right now to, oh. to make your students feel loved. And I appreciate you. <laughs> no problem. It was my honor. I love listening to your podcast. So thank you so much for inviting me. Yep. Thank you so much for saying that. I, it's a fun new little journey, but hopefully it'll reach... Um, give us a greater reach in our department to, to people in our district and, and maybe others um, in other districts as well. So it's awesome. Thanks right. so much. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Learning Unlocked and finding out more about mindfulness and hands-on learning with younger students. Just a reminder that we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GPS Prof Growth. That's at G-P-S-P-R-O-F-G-R-O-W-T-H. If you have listened today as a GPS educator, you can receive PD recertification credit by visiting our employee hub page and navigating to Digital PD On Demand. For more information or resources that were discussed in this episode, please visit our website at www.learningunlock.lipson.com forward slash website. Lipson is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. Thanks again, key holders. Keep unlocking curiosity, creativity, and innovation within your students. And I will see you next time.